Your father also did Kid and Commandments before Ben Hur, and later he was John the Baptist in The Greatest Story Ever Told. Uh, did he ever share with you any reflections of playing such spiritual characters? Well, Dad was in three famous biblical epics, and we also made a biblical documentary called Charlton Heston Presents the Bible. So Ten Commandments was first, then Ben Hur, then uh, Greatest Story Ever Told, where he played John the Baptist. I think the most significant thing in his view about Ben-Hur as opposed to the other two. The other two were historical biblical figures, right? Moses, John the Baptist, well-known people. Ben-Hur is a fictional character who in, in many ways, like Jesus, was a Jew and became perhaps by the end of the film an early Christian. So it's an interesting transformation. He starts as a prince in Judea and is his life is destroyed by the might of the Roman Empire. He becomes a pawn. His family is rent asunder, is, is split, and he's taken from them, put in the depths of a horrible galley, and manages by the, the strength of his character and his soul and his belief in God to return. And because he's a decent human being, he saves another human being, Quintus Arius, from drowning. And as a result, comes back to redeem himself, but first he has to reconcile the desire for vengeance. And although he destroys his enemy, Masala, in, in that process, he realizes that that's perhaps not the way. It's not the best way. And he is so profoundly moved by the sight of Jesus on the cross that, that he, it, it, in that sense, I think, becomes a Christian. Um, so that was something that I think really moved my father. Um, about that story. Interesting, of course, that it was written by a Civil War general, Lew Wallace, after the greatest conflict this country had ever undergone, in perhaps in a spirit of reconciliation, which is certainly a Christian message. Uh, and your father had a long and illustrious career. I'm sure he was proud of the Oscar for Ben-Hur, but were there other films that he was especially pleased with? I think Ben-Hur was certainly his favorite film in terms of the big Hollywood epics. Um, I think in terms of the smaller pictures, perhaps uh, a little western he made at Paramount called Will Penny was close to his heart. That was a wonderful smaller film, uh, perhaps not as, as successful at the box office as Ben-Hur, but certainly very well received. Uh, he and I got to make a film called Treasure Island, which was certainly my personal favorite working uh, of the pictures that I made with my dad. Um, so I think those are probably uh, certainly standouts in his, his pantheon of films. The world's changed quite a bit in the 50 plus years since Ben-Hur came out. Uh, are there parts of it that you don't think would play as well now as then, or conversely, things that are probably more meaningful now than then? That's a good question. You know, you look back 50 years and you look at that film and you say, well, is it relevant today and is it exciting, is it interesting, is it compelling? I think the answer to all those questions is yes. Good stories don't become dated. That film was beautifully made. It was wonderfully shot. In many ways, it's the first modern epic. If you look at the difference between that and Ten Commandments, you'll see two very different styles of filmmaking. You have uh, uh, William Wyler at the height of his career filming Ben-Hur and you have C.B. DeMille at the height of his career making Ten Commandments. But I think they both hold up very well but I think Ben-Hur is, is timeless in the sense of being a modern film. Ben-Hur is an iconic film classic or an epic. You're a producer and a director what likelihood is there of having a film of this kind of genre, this kind of quasi-religious sword and sand epic, get, getting made today? Well, you know, it's, it's common to say, oh, you can't make this film today, or you'd never be able to get away with it today. Certainly it would cost a heck of a lot more than what it did. At the time, it was one of the most expensive films ever, and that was before computer graphics. Now, you could probably save some money if you filmed it today, but would it be as good? I don't think so. Uh, th there has been talk of remaking it, and uh, Dad, when he was alive, he said, well, that's fine. If they want to remake it, you know, good luck. Um, and he meant that sincerely, not, not in a sarcastic way. 
um, great stories deserve to be retold. After all, when we did Treasure Island, it had already been filmed about five times. So uh, hopefully uh, somebody will come back and make a really good version of it. It's a question of, is the acting good? Is the writing good? Is it well-directed? Is it well-made? That will determine the success or failure of the film.